is Maria and thank you so much for watching this video. So this episode is about using watercolors to de-stress. So we all have been through a lot the last couple of years. It's been crazy. And so there's a lot of you that are dealing with depression, with a lot of stress. I am not a psychologist, I am not a therapist, but I do have a skill. I know how to paint with watercolors. And from my own experience, I know how much it helps to paint when you are dealing with stress, when you are dealing with some difficulties in your life. I've been through a lot myself. That's why I know how much power is in this, in painting, because you can simply just focus on something else. And it's really pleasant to think about the colors you're gonna use and the process of painting, you're kind of drifting away somewhere else and you're thinking of other things than uh, dealing with that stress. And at the end of painting, it really helps because you feel so refreshed. That's why I wanted to dedicate this episode to de-stress and white flowers. Anytime I feel like I'm a little stressed out or it's just I'm having like an okay day, that's when I like to go outside and just look at the flowers and smell the flowers. And a lot of times like my husband just knows that I want some flowers in my room. And that really changes a lot. That's why flowers. And iris uh, flowers are beautiful. And my daughter's favorite color is purple, blue. So those two colors. And I teach her that actually purple comes from mixing red with the blue. So the purple can have so many different shades and same thing with the violet, I guess. So it's just, just the blue, that's her favorite color anyway. And then we have the purple. That's why I painted some iris flowers and I thought you might enjoy it as well. So before you begin to paint, please try to relax. And uh, it's nice to keep your feet on the ground and try to be comfortable in your chair and don't worry like about anything going wrong in that painting because things that we normally try to avoid like blooms hard edges are okay it's okay you can splatter you can really have fun with that painting i didn't care about like anything going wrong with it because it's just water and this is just paper so you can also do it again and again and again and you can rip the page or if you're just painting on a sheet you can flip it and just paint on the back side of the sheet so just have fun and try to really relax so before we begin painting it's really important to visualize the process of what we're going to do and how we're going to apply these colors is it going to be wet on wet or wet on dry so it's important to think of all the steps ahead of time so there's no moment like wait what do i do next do i do it wet and dry or wet and wet of course some things become more spontaneous as we continue painting but it's best to really visualize the process and to know if you're starting something wet and wet or wet and dry i'd like to make these flowers paint these flowers loose and wet and wet and i'll keep it really simple too it's all about the colors I do like to have somewhat like a drawing there so I can visualize where I'm going to apply certain colors. So go ahead and draw like very rough sketch of the main flower so you know where to place it. And uh, the petals here, there's another petal here and then I have all these petals but I didn't really draw all of them. It's just like the main one and then um, I have the stem over here and spontaneously I'm probably going to add some more color over here and here but you want to wet the paper maybe like 95% of it so not everywhere like colors will bleed there will be an area where color stops and you'll have a hard edge but you also have more control this way and you can also use a spray bottle so you could spray the paper actually and that helps a lot and uh, this way we have like that nice flow and uh, you do have areas where paper dry, that's for sure. The first thing I like to do is um, basically just stare at the reference image and see all the layers uh, that I can read from that reference image. There's so many colors, beautiful colors. And there's shade, there are different shades of violet, I'd say, and there's some 
blue, lots of blue, but the blue has different shades too, and that's because we see a little bit of that purple violet in there. And my favorite way to create violet or purple is by mixing blue with the reds or pinks. And that's what I'm going to do. So I can create my own uh, shades. And I do have bright rose, which is kind of very similar to, a little similar, I guess, to Oprah. Oprah is a very bright pink color, luminous, basically. And the same, I guess, with a bright rose, but it goes more into, I'd say, like more like a rosy violet. Uh, it's still pink. And then I have Quina Quina Red, which is actually also like a pink red. And then I have the two blues, cobalt blue and phthalo blue. And then for the yellows, Dimi a long yellow and Procyna and then some sap green. However, I actually do need to squeeze some sap green. And then, because I like to add, create different shades of green, I'm going to also add some uh, indigo. And now let's take a deep breath and just try to really relax. Look at that reference image so we can visualize as much as possible on our paper and also like read all those colors that we see and uh, start with the undertones, all the lightest colors that we can see first. And then on top of that, we'll add like the violets and all the darks. So try to relax. This is just a paper. You can always flip the uh, page and you can paint on the other side. And hard edges, blooms are totally okay. Like you don't have to worry about it because your painting will look even more pretty if you do have those hard edges and blooms. This is a different type of painting. It's loose and we really want to let go and just watch what the paint is doing like on its own too. We don't need to control everything. So I'm going to dilute these colors with water to a consistency of heavy cream-like ratio. So think of dairy. When I say heavy cream or half and half or milk or water, I always think of dairy basically because it's the easiest for me to explain what I have on my brush and what I'm going to do on that palette. So I'm going to grab this palette and I'm going to start diluting colors with water. So you can see it all the process. This is imidazolam yellow. So why yellow? It's because the stem actually has quite a bit of yellow and when you look at the um, petals, it, there's also yellow up there. So might, might as well just have some yellow, real yellow on our palette, not just like raw sienna. And this is raw sienna. I'm trying to get rid of the heat from my brush so I don't waste too much. And then this is my sub green if you're using like pants um cakes what are colors in cakes you might want to dilute the color in that cake and then maybe br bring it over to your palette because it would be much easier and this is my indigo i slightly mixed it with sub green this is oprah if you don't have oprah don't, please don't worry about like matching any colors anyway Oh, but you could be, it could be like any other pink, basically. So there it is. I'm gonna clean it, clean the brush, go for the bright rose. So that's my bright rose. I'm gonna go towards cobalt blue here and then follow blue because those are gonna mix together. I don't mix these colors really on the palette. I try to mix all of it on the paper. I don't really see much of the quin red in there, but as soon as you mix it with like follow blue, you start seeing this color. And follow blue is the primary blue according to Hawaii's color palette. And here I just grab more water and I'm creating like different shades of violet with that cobalt blue. And there's my violet blue. There you go. I'm gonna put this on the side. Put my brush away. And now I'm gonna get ready to apply water towards the paper. It looks like my daughter took my spray bottle away. I guess I'll have to deal without it. So what I'm gonna do is I'm going to 
grab my flat brush, a soft brush. So you want something comfortable in your hand and softer brush is better overall to wet the paper because it doesn't feel like you're scraping over your paper or even when you're re-wetting an area, like you're not scrubbing off the previous color. So I'm dipping this brush in water. I do have quite a bit of water on my brush. I'm gonna start from the background and I don't care about wetting everywhere. So as you see, like it's kind of very lazy way just to wet the paper. And where I see the petals, I'm also gonna go quickly. And that's because I don't have the spray bottle. <laughs> Otherwise I would do it with the spray bottle. And, and a brush too, I would do it with both, like both ways. But it would be much easier to have that spray bottle. And I'm just gonna quickly wet it. I do have quite a bit of water there on my paper, but it doesn't bother me. Again, this is kind of like a loose painting. That's why it's important to visualize where are the petals and what helps is to have like a, a rough sketch. I'm saying rough because you're not trying to like do details like on in this flower and everything will be more like spontaneous. But we do need to pay attention to the colors, like what colors we're starting with first. So we want to start with lightest colors first. So I'm going to grab, let's see, I'm going to start from the petals actually. This is a quill size toothbrush and I'm going to mix colors. Basically like I do want some yellows. So I guess I could start from the yellows first. So let's grab a little bit of like yellow you have and then rosiana maybe or yellow ochre that you have. And find that area in the reference image where you see those yellows. A little more of that. And when I apply this color here, it's heavy cream like ratio so think of dairy and heavy cream like ratio that's because my paper is wet and my paper is wet that means if i bring that paint diluted with water like let's say milk like ratio so paint is way more diluted with water things will spread too much too fast and i'll lose that control so i'm looking for all the areas whatever i can see that yellow in the reference image and that's where I want to apply it and then there's another stem right here and then I have like petal so I can start it a little bit and just have some yellows here and there right and then I want to see like do I have a little bit of that yellow here and I added a little bit of red as well so over here maybe and then let's grab a little bit of quin red and mix it with those yellows and let's remember I didn't clean my brush so it's kind of like the brush is still dirty and carries all these other, just the yellow, raw sienna and imidazolam yellow. Now it's with an addition of quin red. So just like that, I'm gonna clean this brush. I'm gonna take care of the petals now. So I have quite a bit of water actually on my brush. But what I want is bright rose and opera. And if I want it to be more pink, I'll just add more pink to that mix. But it's cold blue, follow blue, Oprah and bright rose, just because I have all of these colors. And look for those petals. You're going to recreate these petals now. So if I want it to be more blue, like in this case, I feel like this one is way more blue. So I'm grabbing more blue and I'm going this direction and then I want it to be to be a little bit more pinkish so I'm grabbing more of that pink I didn't clean my brush yet please notice that that I didn't clean my brush I just continue grabbing colors I want more diluted paint and I want to continue shaping this part here so this is my first iris so now you can see it better and there's one iris that's right here it's coming kind of from like this right side you can't really see it but I'm gonna just paint one petal and then there's one more here. But if I paint it with the same shade like here, the purples, I'm gonna lose it. So I need this to be more like bluish purple. And that's why I still, I grab more of the cobalt blue with the pinks that I have. And then just kind of pulling the paint. 
and there's my other iris. I'm gonna create one petal right there. So I grab the cobalt blue with the pinks, and then it's kind of like I'm gonna pretend like this one is coming from somewhere behind. I have another iris there, maybe like one here or something like that, just so composition is nice. And so I guess to make composition even nicer, I should have like something here maybe. You can also like splatter paint. Let me put this down. When you splatter, you really want a little more water on your uh, mixed with that paint and maybe some pink as well. There you go. So something like this. But what I have now is a lot of that bright violet and might as well just use it for the areas where I have the most of that violet. So there's my iris there. And I'm kind of going back towards some of the areas to release what I have already on my brush. I have these beautiful colors there, right? What I really need to do now is clean this brush. Clean this brush. I have three jars, so it's kind of traveling from one to another. And grab a little bit more of the mix with the cobalt blue, maybe phthalo blue, and add it towards some of the petals that need a little more um, definition, maybe. And I just want to add a little more color there. So you can go back to those areas. That's the thing. You can go back. And then a thing and trick I'm going to show you is um, lifting colors. So I'm adding, I'm adding a couple more here. And now I'm going to clean this brush. What's happening is my paper is drying. So what I need to do is work quickly on the stems to add a little bit of green. So now I'm grabbing some of that self green, maybe with the indigo. And I'm finding my stem, which is drying fast. But I still have that time to add the colors. And I'm going to add it right here, a little bit over here, and we create some of parts of that stem. So now we can see the stem, right? Right here. So I'm finding my stem. And this is like a ready to bloom part of the flower. And this is like part of it too. So now that because the paper is drying, you actually have more um, things that you can do. Lifting colors, adding more color, but very gently. And pay attention to that ratio of water and paint because it needs to be more like half and half or heavy cream like ratio at the most. I decided to add one more stem there. And I think that's it for the stems. And another thing is, like I said, you have to pay attention to how the paper is drying because you can do still some things. We can lift colors in a second, but how about we grab the uh, regular brush, some of that combination of the pinks and, and blue, which gives us a purple. And then we can help to recreate these petals by adding those veins. So it's like a quick grab of colors and I'm looking for my petals and where I can add these wet on wet. So this is wet on wet and it's just kind of like lines. So basically veins. Another thing is what we're going to do and we have to do this pretty quickly overall because paper is drying. But we're going to lift colors. Lifting colors works very well when you do this uh, right before the paper is completely dry. And then I have one more here. So I haven't re refilled my brush. And luckily, I'm co I'm, I continue just working. I was continue I continued to work with that same refill of that paint. But now I just had to reload and get more. But it's the same thing. It's just adding like veins over the petals. So now I'm going to clean this brush. And this is... The most important moment really, and this is what I like to do the most, is lifting colors. 
So find the veins, but the paper, first it's shiny. You see that shine over the paper. And then that shine goes away. That's when you know the paper is almost dry, but it's still wet. So I'm going to start lifting here because this is the most dry area. Also here. So I'm going to define my stem and find some highlights because you can also lift colors to create the highlights over the stems. And here, just kind of pulling my brush. And you don't have to like lift it off, you don't want to, but lifting really looks pretty. And if you can find that timing here, I'm gonna lift a little bit too. But I have to watch like what area is drying faster. A lot of these areas are still too wet actually, as a matter of fact. But this is really beautiful and I can see the granulation of colors happening too. And this is uh, because bright rose, I believe is uh, cobalt blue and bright rose are the granulated colors. And Hawaii doesn't have really that many granulated pigments. But there's granulation happening here on my paper right now, right here. And this is really beautiful. If you do paint with a brand that's, that's, that's like, that just granulates, uh, naturally paints granulate, then you see like even more pretty things happening on your paper. Because again, we're painting this loose. We're not adding second layer. This is different compared to like my regular videos and and I'm trying to keep things really simple and much easier in a way. Um, at least like something that, you know, hard edges are okay, blooms are okay, you don't have to worry about it. And these are the things that normally I teach like how to avoid if you want to have the most control. I'm still lifting colors. Because this video is to de-stress. Flowers, I feel like Whenever I'm a little stressed out, I feel like I'm stressing and something like this, like flowers, some, they're really like amazing. Like um, usually like I would just go outside and pick a few flowers and just bring them home and it makes me feel better right away. I love flowers and paintings, completely different. It's even more relaxing actually. And when you're painting loose, when we're not painting something specific, when we're not trying to master a certain technique, um, then you can really really relax because I understand like if you're trying to master a certain technique or you're trying to uh, paint a dog and things are just not working out and it's not really that relaxing right but if you from the beginning you assume that you know splatter is okay blooms are okay hard edges are okay it's gonna get wet and it doesn't matter then you will be fine you will enjoy it you will enjoy the process it just all depends from your attitude, how you prepare yourself for that painting. And that's why I want this to be relaxing and so you don't worry about those little things. So this painting is pretty much done. What you can do is just maybe add a little bit of yellow so you could. But the areas are like mostly dry. This is heavy cream like ratio to what I have on my brush, but I decided to add a little yellow here. So if you add a little bit of yellow here and there, it will help to make it like pop a little bit. So something like here maybe. I'll add a little bit of yellow over here too. And that makes it a little more interesting, right? And I'm still looking for the areas that are wet. And then it looks like there's like a little bit of hair or something. Why not to recreate it? Same, same brush. I'm just looking for little things to do as an, an addition. And I have a different tutorial, which is actually on Patreon. I painted an iris and I was actually adding burnt sienna for these kind of areas. I didn't squeeze burnt sienna, but you could add some of that burnt sienna there. Instead, I think I'm going to add a little bit of that purple in here. So just a little bit of that purple that we created. And that's it guys. I don't want to do much more to it. I think I want to just keep it loose, relaxing. And uh, again, this is to de-stress and take your time. Don't stress about anything, please. It's just a paper. You can paint it again. You can flip the paper and you can paint on the back side of it. Just enjoy it and 
yeah, just have fun with watercolors. Bye.